Here we go. I think it's all working. Excellent. All right. Welcome everybody to tonight's Friday night webinar. Um, I always say Ooh, it's an exciting week. There's been so many shifts and changes, but this is kind of a unique one in that um, we're a few days before the new moon, so we get to really prepare for it, um, really get grounded, really get kind of um, focused and get our desires and all our ducks in a row so that by um, Monday when the actual new moon is in its full beauty that we will just be clean and clear and ready to manifest all of the wonderful things. Good evening, Samara. Welcome. Um, so there's a few really cool things that are occurring right now with this new moon and this doesn't usually happen when we have a new moon we have something that's called lunar nodes and you guys may have heard of lunar nodes before um they're not just they're not like planets that move through but what it is is actually um points of orbital paths where the moon is crossing the sun and the the lunar nodes shift about every 18 months or so so it it doesn't often fall on a new moon or full moon so um astrological people out there are really excited about these lunar nodes shifting on the same day that there is a new moon and then just a few days later we shift out of cancer and right into leo and so there's all this beautiful energy that's just shifting and changing and when we think about um, and talk about lunar nodes what happens is with a lunar node um, it will move into a new sign but it also has deeper meaning behind it the north node will often be what's referred to as our future and our south node will be sort of referred to as the past and so you can actually look on your birth charts and see where the um the lunar nodes uh, the north and the south end up falling in your chart so you may be more affected if you if you happen to be in the particular um, astrological signs that the nodes are in. So right now the the south is actually shifting from Scorpio into Libra. So that's a big like we're talking different elements. We're talking different houses. The north is actually moving from Taurus into Aries. And so that's another exciting shift that happens um, at the same time. So if you are in, in Aries or if you are in uh, Libra, you may notice a little bit more of a, of a stronger intensification when it comes to these lunar nodes. So it's kind of kind of interesting how that all works so there's a lot of people feeling shifts on different levels not only with all the planetary retrogrades that we have going on right now like neptune coming into retrograde on the 22nd i think it is where that's hey heather welcome um and where we're going to uh, end up feeling a lot of these really big shifts start to come in and so there's I'm going to get into that a little bit more about how this is sort of really going to affect us and make us feel. When we are in a new moon in Cancer, it's kind of like the Cancer is sort of like the emotionally intelligent sign. And so it's bringing up a lot of emotional intelligence for a lot of us where we're seeing things that we've never really seen before understanding things on a level that we've never really understood them before and a lot of this comes in around the realms of nurturing naturing um, around relationships um, there's been i don't know if you guys have noticed just around you i'm uh, the it hasn't really affected me too much but i noticed with people that I'm talking to, there's just been a lot of drama 
it's like you're feeling almost like you're in high uh, high school or even back to like kindergarten grade one type of mentality where it's just these um these big dramas where it's like i think i'm too old for this you know like this is a a lot of drama a lot of people have been just noticing um things are just kind of being blown out of proportion a little bit for people that aren't sort of in tune with their emotional intelligence and really um um, embracing these upgrades that we're getting it's kind of throwing people for a bit of a loop where they're just like that's it i'm done i've had it and they're ready to just burn the house down or throw in the towel and and it something like that normally wouldn't affect them as much but it's just like this is kind of like the tipping point so my intentions for this evening are to um really allow us to propel forward by manifesting into this 8-8 portal that we're going to be coming into next in, in the beginning of August. It's like this really big growth time where we have this, the sun is, is, um, increasing its lightness we've had and it's affecting our light bodies we're having this consciousness shift simply because of the amount of solar flares that started to happen in the middle of june there even with the earth's um, frequency raising so high this has kind of given us what what um, a lot of astrological people are calling almost like a skip step where it's like kind of fast forwarding into some of the emotional intelligence that we have been conjuring and and working with and um, instigating it's allowing us to be able to really see what these things are that have been kind of holding us back or kind of getting in our way there's been a lot of conversations that i've had where it's like things are coming to our mind where we're able to get those answers of you know what's really holding me back and we're we're able to look at them in in this new moon light in this it's lighting up the things that we've been really needing to see and i mean even on a personal note i don't often um dive into really personal things but i've had some really beautiful epiphanies of of just the things that when I've been really asking these questions, I've been really getting the answers in a really clear way. And sometimes those are hard to digest. Sometimes it's like having this really honest talk with the person that knows you best, or this really honest talk with your soul where you're like, okay, you know, why am I not doing what I'm saying I'm doing? Why am I not moving forward with this. And so I'm going to urge you guys to ask yourselves this today. And we're going to dive a little bit deep and we're going to do a different type of meditation um, that you guys have all probably done before. I wasn't sure um, who would be on if I would have new people again. So I wasn't exactly, um, I had a couple of different meditations in mind, but the inner fire meditation was really speaking to me strongly over the last few days because that one is a way to kind of really make that choice. You know, when you just really feel like doing something like yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before I was in my garden and I was just like, I just really feel like going for a walk. And usually I'm telling myself every day, you need to go for a walk. It's, it's, you need to get your body moving. You need to get into the cycle. This is something you need to do every day. I know that just going out for a walk, grounding, um, enjoying the nature around me. Uh, yeah, it's time to stoke this fire, right? Like it really, um, and because of what's going on in the lunar cycles and the planetary cycles, it's like, oh, I've got goosebumps. It's, it's time. It's time to make that choice and to really allow ourselves to stop stopping ourselves. And so the inner fire meditation is kind of, it's a deep one and it's kind of um, not always the most you know, a happy feeling, uh, because it, it, it ends up feeling good, but we're going to go to a place that, um, you know, if we keep putting the brakes on and if we keep not doing the things, we need to take a real look at that and how that's going to look for us so that we can stoke that inner fire so that we can really, um, start using that 
fan and flame and get things, you know, just like we're ready, but sometimes we don't truly make that choice. And so we dove a lot into true choices over the last little while, really kind of getting in there, um, integrating the parts, getting everything sort of on board. And now that we're at this stage and now that it's, it's, these lunar nodes are shifting. I mean, like that, like I said, this only happens every 18 months or so um, on a new moon in this eight, eight portal. We know the number eight is all about manifestation. Um, let's freaking do this, right? Like, let's just do it. Let's just go for it. So I really had that intention. I thought that that would be kind of a, a fun and, um, um gratuitous way to be able to just really make that choice um i know that um when i was really on fire uh and it was probably close to 18 months ago i was i was doing the inner fire a lot and i did an addictions um program for five days where we did the inner fire and it really um really helped to kind of just give people that motivation again to dial in that choice in a way that was a little bit more significant, a little bit more imprinted in every way. So we're going to imprint that into the quantum field tonight and just really get that going. So um, these these nodal lunar nodal shifts that that I was speaking of, they're they're kind of made to help us to really get to that that future timeline that we are um, so greatly destined for that we can see in our minds. But this is like I say, this is almost like a little skip step. It's like we get to almost fast forward a little bit and move past a lot of the the drama, a lot of the mumble jumble that's been going on and really get clear. So I'm going to dive in a little bit about some of these, a, a little bit more about the solar cycle, um, because this is something that rotates around every 11 years, 10 to 11 years or so. And so around 2013, 2014 was the last time that we had this intensity of, of a solar cycle. And when it happens like this, it's like your limitations are just removed. This ascension process that we're on just accelerates. There's more people coming into consciousness. And you may have even noticed this with uh, people that you're around. There's people that, um, like I'm just meeting all these like 20 somethings that are just so conscious, just so they're able to stay so positive. They're able, and I think it is because of this cycle um, that they're able to kind of grow this. And one of the things that I've noticed, and I don't know if you guys have, have been feeling this as well, but it was interesting how pride was just going on uh, at the end of June and all of these situations where people are really coming into their own. And I found it really quite profound that there are so many people that are just figuring out who they are and they're just coming out in the world as as who they really um who they really resonate with who they like they're following their soul's journey and it's interesting because our parents and our parents parents and even our parents parents they were coming out of out of a place when you think back to the way things were in the 1800s and even you know 50 years ago you you couldn't be that individual you had to conform you had to be a doctor lawyer dentist you had to get a good job you had to get a pension you had to there was a, there was a way you do things you don't stand out you don't choose your own name and make everyone um call you that you don't dress a certain way where you're going to draw a lot of attention to yourself because you would literally be killed i mean i lived in grand cayman island for a year or two and living in the caribbean like that this was in oh the early 2000s like yeah it had to be early 2000s 2001 2002 maybe and at that point i mean things were 
sort of forward forward moving as far as um, if you were gay people were coming out it, it was rosie o'donnell was really big then and and ellen had come out like all these people were sort of coming coming out of the closet per se letting everybody know who they were and in a place like uh the caribbean that was a dangerous thing if you were known as as a gay man there you literally would be shot on the street this is just you know and for a lot of you um if you're not uh say you were born somewhere else um and you grew up around these things you knew how much standing out and being seen could truly get you killed and so there was these rules that you had to follow and as the generations have been growing and and shifting there's so many people that are just coming into their own and and it, when we think about it and from a coaching perspective i'm coming at with all of these different people out of true love really feeling love towards them and being able to understand this is who they truly are and what a beautiful thing that they are having the strength to come out and and just be who they are and and i think a lot of us are probably still afraid to do that to be our own person the way the generations have, have been changing they're, they're it's like they're bred they're made for this they're kind of like technology they're made for this the 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 way that a, a young child can operate an an iphone or or what would have you these technological um monstrosities that I tend to just kind of like not not you know not not resonate with they're meant for this they it's like it was in their 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 path it was this soul expansion for them to be able to live in this technologically advanced world that we have now I love that busting out of the light worker closet right the star seeds are coming they are <laughs> and the light workers and and everybody but what i've noticed is there's such um dissonance in some people who especially because i'm around a lot of freedom fighters i was really um intuitive as far as things like the vaccine and all that kind of stuff went i just i um i made my kids suffer um the the atrocity of being some of the only kids not vaccinated in their whole school or in their, our whole town and um they lost friends and I, but i just i couldn't deny that strong hell no feeling like i couldn't do anything to repair their bodies after what that made i just i couldn't like it was like when i was told i had to bring them in i was like you will have to rip them out of my arms screaming because and it'd be me screaming because i just i just it was such a strong intuitive feeling and now you know a few years later i'm getting comments from a lot of people like man i wish i had that that intuition i wish i had followed my heart because now you know this person died in my family and this person's sick and this person has this and i don't we don't know what it's from but i like i i just i wish i had i had been able to be strong and it 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 came into my mind that all of this has been happening on this sort of slow type of level but it's getting faster now and it's getting to a point where we're being urged to pay attention to our intuition to follow our inner voice to listen to that to to be able to speak our minds to to know what's going on in our minds and when we're not being inundated by all the stories that people are telling us when we're not following the narrative that we're being told when we're really following our heart when we're getting out of our head there's this this intuition this conversation this language that happens within yourself you are the, the one when you say ask yourself you know you're asking without words you're having these inner conversations all the time so to have these inner conversations to be able to be emotionally moving you forward and not keeping us held back is truly a way to finally create what it is that we want and a lot of the times these voices are even coming from within 
you know, like there, there are own voices that are telling us what we can and can't do. And just like the outdated versions of the generations past saying you can't do this, some of these ideas and some of these narratives and patterns that we've been telling ourselves are, are also outdated and they're, they're holding us back now from what it is that we really want. And so on this personal level, I was really getting frustrated with myself for, for not, um, you know, not being able to stick to what I said I was going to do with, with health, with, you know, eating properly with all this kind of stuff. And so I asked myself, what, you know, what is it that is serving you? Like, why, what is stopping you? And it, it was like, innately i knew and have known and this is something that a lot of you may feel as well is if we're not doing that very basic step we simply can't get further in this is a way to self-sabotage this is a way to stop ourselves if we can't we know innately that this is what we need to do it's like enough already i just need to i just need to i'm i just need to take care of myself better so that I am healthy to move forward. But that is the exact thing that will also prevent me from getting to where I want to go. And it was like this safety net of like, it's comfortable. It's that's what I'm used to. I'm used to not taking care of myself. That is more common, right? What is, what is, that's a good question. What am I going to lose by having this, right? What is it that is like, what is this stopping me from? What is this not going to give me if I don't do this? Right. And um, so we're going to ask ourselves that a little bit today, just to really get into um, clarity about where it is that we're going. Cause with everybody, it's something different. We all want something. Uh, we are, are all wanting to create something but there still seems to be something in the way. This new moon is the time to allow that light and that knowledge and that intellectual consciousness upgrade to come in. And it will, we, when we ask these questions, we will get these answers. There really is um, like all of the obstacles can be removed just by making this choice, by making this true choice to move forward with what it is that we want. So one of the fun things I like to do is a, um, a future memory um, exercise where we actually um, start to think about a future memory. And so I'm going to give us some of the really neat um, ways that we can <sighs> yes, exactly. Maslow's experiment. There's so many ways um, that this has been explained and so many different ways to kind of go about it. We're going to just use the planetary um, energy that we have working with us right now, all of the all of the retrogrades, all of the um, magnification on these things that we need to be able to shift. And a lot of it is truly about um like about your home about your your home base about how you want to nurture how you want to um mother right how you want to mother yourself how you may even be sort of more compelled to be around kids lately you may feel a little bit differently around kids you might even be enjoying the playfulness of them you might um be feeling more or less maternal you may be having some epiphanies around that but a lot of this has to do with um, home safety security relationships and being able to actually allow ourselves to be coming from a place of love versus coming from a place of fear and this has kind of been my sentence for the week when we are making a decision, when we are making a choice, when we are interacting with someone, if we're interacting with them and ourselves from a place of love, this is a whole different vibration than if we are operating from that place of fear. And if we just stick to that, that one very simple premise, 
we can create a lot more peace, harmony, safety, security, and joy in our lives just by being able to understand, even if we're feeling not ourselves, even if we're feeling those parts takeovers happen, or if we're feeling um, agitated, or if we're just, you know, however we're feeling, it's often that we're sitting in that place of fear. We're in those lower vibrational frequencies. So to be able to raise that up, we can't always get from fear to love, but we can get to acceptance. We can get to be to a point where even as I was talking about, this is where I was going with the whole, you know, if we can be like, isn't it kind of cool that these people, whoever they might be and whatever they may believe and whatever they want to create in their lives, they were able, <laughs> I love that. There's this kids in general were just annoying to me this week. It actually made me wonder why I bothered trying to teach them yoga. That's funny. And normally you love them. It's, it's interesting how these, the mothering thing was coming up this week. It was just like, oh, that's, that's, that's so funny. I, I don't mean funny, funny, but it, it's, it's not surprising just because kids have been, um, you either really want to hang around with them or you're actually really, really needing a break. You've also had a lot of kids over the last uh, year. So this is a little bit of a break. That's <laughs> too funny. I have to say it's a little bit, it's a little bit interesting trying to keep, teach kids yoga because it's very um, natural to them. They can usually just sort of do it. So it's, it's different with adults. You have to kind of, um, really teach them the beginning and they want to learn it. Whereas kids are kind of like, nah, I know this all I'm done. I want to go do this now. You know, they're a little bit more, they, they, it's just such a different intention. That's so cute. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so there's a few things that when I was thinking about, um, yeah, as far as, you know, people really kind of coming and they wanted to play with dead ants on the floor exactly right <laughs> it's way more interesting than this breathing stuff i taught breath, uh, breath work to uh, one of my daughter's teams and it was so funny because some of them were like oh i love that i wish we could do it all the time and others were like i'm never doing that again that was horrible <laughs> it's just like oh goodness I love working with kids. They 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 definitely um, are the our biggest teachers, aren't they? Uh, okay, so I'm like dehydrated. So we are um, we are thirsty right now for um, this conscious expansion, and and it is happening. So one of the things that we can do, you know, sometimes when we're trying to um, make big shifts like you know i'm beating myself up, up about not eating properly and not exercising enough and all this kind of stuff what was really coming to me was there's some things that we can do to kind of regulate our nervous system first to really get us into the realm of being able to make this change and there's you know I, we talk about meditating all the time but how many of us are actually taking some time each day to make sure that we are meditating for maybe 10 to 30 minutes 15 minutes even just of actually putting the brain in neutral so that it's not going um, in one direction or the other, moving from that fear into acceptance, accepting everyone for who they are, accepting. So we go into acceptance about these kids. Yeah, kids want to play with dead ants. Have a have a, a reward at the end where they can go play with the dead ants, whatever it might be. But we can, re we'll react a whole lot differently if we're feeling in love versus feeling in in fear in frustration in those lower frequencies so really this is an opportunity to pay attention to that frequency of our emotions and what might be actually really going on behind the scenes really looking at when i look at it from like the scientific level from the frequency level i'm like oh yeah i was totally not in love and then i can take a few deep breaths respond get into that that feeling of love usually from moving through acceptance first getting in there but there's so many other cool things like um regulating that nervous system right because even when we're trying to balance um this is where this is all coming from balancing hormones you know getting things moving in the right direction you can't just start doing all the things you can't just you know 
start eating perfectly one day and continue on all the time. Some people can. Uh, for some, especially neurodivergent people, it's a little bit harder. So for if we are struggling with this, if you guys have been, um, you know, getting frustrated with yourself, I'm going to give you about five or 10 things that are kind of just sort of known, but ideas to regulate that nervous system to get yourself into acceptance so that you can stay in that frequency of love and be in that frequency of love more often because it's all about frequency right we know how the the laws of the universe work so we're gonna just dial in these laws of the universe dial in this law of attraction so deep breathing have we been doing our breath work What about just, you know, the Wim Hof app is free. What about downloading that and just doing some Wim Hof action? You know, the the really deep breaths, channeling that for just, you know, 10 10 rounds even, just nothing crazy, maybe five minutes of breathing. Um, Ice baths, the cold shower, um, getting back to that, trying to sort of stimulate that, that vagal response. Um, doing some hip opener type exercises where we're actually allowing the energy to move through our bodies. I know you guys did shift the frequency with me last year where we did a lot of movement and energy, but just hip opening exercises or even um, standing and grounding yourself in the morning by doing a little bit of shaking, you know, shake the whole body, you shake your legs, you shake your hips, you shake your arms, even if you're wheelchair bound you can still do shaking with your upper body you can shake as much of your body as you can you can you know sort of move some of that fascia and just you know stretch and and shake you can do the the body tapping so literally um qigong style you know go outside the 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 arms just start and you you literally slap your whole body you go outside of the arm you go inside of the arm you go all down the chest down the side you do your belly you do your legs your hips you tap you literally whack your whole body outside of the leg inside of the leg just stimulates all that lymph gets your gets your endocrine system moving gets things woken up you know change that state Um, listening to some really happy music, some good songs, music I'm so into lately, and I'm just always looking for fun, happy, good songs. I love just playing some happy music during the day to try and just lift that mood into acceptance and moving it into joy. Watching something really funny, fainting goat videos I always talk about, or, you know, goofy, I don't, for some reason I laugh so hard when you see people fall, like they're, those fail videos, I my, I'll cry, I'll laugh so hard, it's terrible, um, my kids think I'm a little bit sick, it's funny, but, you know, just watching something that makes you laugh, maybe for some people it's something like watching an old episode of Golden Girls or Three's Company or one of those old goofy shows that would be now banned probably from TV. Um, taking a book and just reading outside or going outside and grounding, putting your feet right on the ground. It's summer for most of us where we are right now. Getting outside, standing in your bare feet, even laying on the ground on your belly, feeling let, letting your solar plexus ground. Like t- uh, this weekend, your solar plexus is going to feel a little bit stirred um and that can make us feel kind of anxious or a little bit sort of on edge and so literally go outside and lie on the ground it is intense to ground with your belly button on the the actual ground itself and to just breathe that earth in it is intense it is beautiful um use a weighted blanket um you know whatever all of these things can really just help to shift your state to get you into acceptance so that you can get out of that funk a little bit so that you can really get focused because it is it is time to really um start having some fun and enjoying some of this soul expansion that we are on i i feel like our soul is is meant to like this 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 planetary intelligence that's coming in right now is just such a beautiful teacher but all that wisdom is inside of us it's just can we slow down long enough to listen to it and to really pay attention to what it's saying and can we ask some of those right questions to be able to really make a profound difference right 
So I don't know if you guys have done a, a future memory before, but I'd love for you to even throw it in the chat actually, or, or write it down if you don't want to put it in the chat, that's okay. But I want us to close our eyes for a moment before we get into our meditation tonight. And I want us to come up with a future memory. So what I really mean by this is I want you to tell me about a future memory that you want to create that you can see happening that hasn't happened yet. So this could be, you know, my um, right away, it goes to maybe being on vacation or, um, you know, literally think of this moment, create a moment in your consciousness, in your timeline of a future memory that you are going to have. It could be just lying with, you know, your soulmate on a blanket under the stars, watching Venus, you know, where you, you're going to be able to right now, Venus and Mars, you're going to be able to see them so clearly. Um, it could be going for a walk in in venice on the canals it could be sitting and eating pizza with a, a bestie that you've just always wanted to travel with it could be lying on a beach it could be going to a, a forest that you've never been to before it could be but i want you to make it as specific as you can i want you to think about something that you're something that you're feeling if it's the texture of the blanket on the ground that you're lying on maybe you're in a truck box out in the country watching northern lights or maybe you are um somewhere exotic maybe you are um, at your own cabin that you can just picture in your mind and you're making coffee in the morning before anyone wakes up and your your older kids are coming out with their kids and you're you're a grandma and you're a grandpa and you're waiting for them to show up I want you to I want you to just think of a future memory that you could create it doesn't have this isn't what we're doing in the meditation um, to go to just this memory but I think I really enjoy making these future memories um, because they are, they come in as a bit of a soul expansion. They come in as a message as to something that you are going to create, something that you would just love. And this, this is just something that you would just absolutely love to do. So take a moment and just breathe into that. And just create this future memory, almost like a, like a little movie that you're watching. Think about some of the textures, some of the smells. What does the air feel like? Is it moist or damp? Is it in the evening? Is it in the daytime? Is, do you feel the sunshine? Are you drinking or eating something yummy? Are you um, with someone maybe you can or can't see a face maybe you can smell their their cologne or just uh maybe it's with your husband and you 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 can just you're just you know how that feels already or maybe you've never met them but you know what that feeling would feel like and just feel it just feel what that moment would feel like as you create this future memory just really have some fun with this just create this future joy this future memory in your in your mind and as you just allow this to kind of upgrade into your system as you allow this to just become awareness and just this is just that higher emotional intelligence that's just allowing you to have this this um tra instant transformation into this sort of visionary future that you can have it's really fun to be able to just make a future memory that we want to create it gives us a bit of a a bit of a north star in a way a bit of something to sort of move towards and now as we're in that positive place i'm going to ask you guys to get as comfortable as you can instill that memory deep in your mind take a snapshot or, or a photo just as a place that you can come back to i like making different future memories every day just for fun just um actually trying to to work on my on my visionary skills to be able to um, really feel what it would feel like to be there 
and on my writing skills so that I write these things down more and more because it's really fun to go back and actually read them. It's kind of like a future letter um, that I had us do at one point, I believe it was on a new moon as well, where you kind of write a letter to yourself in the future about a journal entry, um, that kind of thing. Like today I woke up and I went for my walk and I actually jogged for a while and um, was gone for an hour longer than I had planned and I felt really good. My body didn't ache and um, I drank so much water today. I'm, I'm, you know, just all these really great things that you're doing in your journal entries. These are fun kind of things to do on new moons. So once we're done this, I'm going to encourage you guys to do a little bit of journaling. New moons are really nice to journal on and I don't often get rid of the papers. I like to keep them. I like to do some future memory work with that. Um, uh, this is going into some some feminine energy. So you may even be called over this new moon to do a little bit of inner child work where you can actually have a conversation in your journal um, as your inner child. And so what I do is I take my my dominant hand and I write, hello, little Jackie, how are you doing today? And then with my left hand, I'll respond and I'll be like, whatever it is, I'm feeling a little frustrated today. Or I'm feeling a little sad today. Or I'm feeling allow that inner child to kind of speak, allow this this um, inner feminine work to come out. I, I didn't stress enough on how this beautiful feminine energy is really um, going to help us prepare our our emotional intelligence to to feel safe and secure to feel as though we can move forward and there's a lot of ways to kind of get into these answers that we're looking for so whether it's the things that I suggested the journaling the inner child work the um uh, asking of questions like what is this you know what really is stopping me I'm encouraging you guys over the next few days and especially into Monday Tuesday to really be asking yourselves like so why you know why am I not doing this what what is what is this doing for me how is this serving me what is this you know what would I have to let go of to be able to really propel forward and you will get these answers they're going to be coming in so I know it was a lot of blah a lot of information just now but um all of these ways are going to help us be grounded feeling safe and secure feeling emotionally supported by ourselves so that we can ask these questions get these answers that have these tough conversations with ourselves in a way that they will be finally really listen to and really it's like now we have this information to be able to make the choice and this is what it comes down to is making this choice so i'd like you guys to make a choice on what it is that you want to create in your life right now what it is that has been calling you what it is that has been maybe feeling really stagnant that isn't moving like you want it to you know, maybe you are choosing to to um, maybe want to try a new relationship, or maybe you're choosing to want to really move forward in your career. Uh, career is a big one right now too. That's going to be getting some clarity shone onto it with this new moon. So um, allow yourself to really dream right now. To really pay attention to what it is that you've been really wanting to create something that you would just love something that would really change your life something that would make a real difference for you and we're going to go ahead and dive right into our inner fire meditation and so i would love for you guys to just feel yourself getting grounded imagine that there is a an expansiveness that's happening in your belly as you breathe in your whole body is just expanding and absorbing the light of the new moon the light of the sun all the solar energy it's just almost like a seed or an acorn that's having this light um, consciousness 
seep into it and just imagine that you are this little seed you are this little acorn it's deep down inside your solar plexus and this solar energy that's happening right now is is the solar emotional intelligence that is shining on your seed to allow it to grow to tell it to give it that instruction it's like your light body is getting the instructions as to what it is that it needs to create this tree that you're growing inside of you so plant this seed of what it is that you really want to create inside of your solar plexus and just imagine that with every breath in you're increasing that solar energy in your body that this light body is getting more information more intellect more more of the codes and downloads that it needs to really grow into this tree that you are you have you have made you have designed it's this unique seed that is just inside of you it's only you and imagine this just growing throughout your whole light body through your whole physical body and it's like it's connecting and expanding into all consciousness into all timelines into all quantum realms and it's starting to grow and this intellectual knowledge is starting to download and create this growth of this plant that's inside of you and connecting your feet down to the earth into mother's into mother earth's beautiful cosmic grid the one with all of the energy and the information the downloads and codes that are ready to be shared with the world. This soul expansion that is you, this this beautiful soul's expansion that's been ready to happen for so long. It's like it's getting fertilized, it's getting fed, it's getting the light codes, it's getting all of the information that it needs and just focusing on your breath, imagine your feet just connecting deep down roots growing into that matrix of the universe imprinting the whole quantum realm with this choice that you are making what is your choice what is your choice that you are making right now is it to create a healthy body to to really live in health and vitality to really expand your career to allow yourself to have your your soul's purpose your divine your divine teachings shared across the world just noticing what that is and for just a moment i want you to imagine yourself not taking any steps towards this choice We're just going to go here for a moment. We're going to step into a place where we decide not to do it. We decide not to expand our soul. We decide to stay exactly where we are. We decide to stay stuck. And I want you to try and fast forward to a few months from now. Going into the fall where it's starting to get cold, the weather, the sun is starting to wane. And I want you to imagine not making any changes in your life, not working towards any of this stuff, just really deciding it was too much, just it was too much work and just not making any changes at all. Imagine just a few months from now, not making any changes at all, things staying exactly the way they are. And if in staying, the exact way they they are, I want you to imagine how it would be by Christmas if you still were doing nothing, if nothing changed, if you weren't making any progress, if you chose to not make progress, you're literally choosing to not move forward with this six months from now. The whole rest of the year, you just decided to not make any of these positive changes, these, these not plant the seed, not and, and just play with this. We're just moving into a timeline. We're not creating this world. We're just exploring it for a moment. And now I want you to imagine a whole year from now. Imagine next summer 
and not have made any changes. In fact, I want you to imagine how things would be if you didn't change anything. And I want you to imagine right now that you're getting up in the morning, you're in the exact same place, or maybe you don't even have this place anymore. Maybe you didn't move forward with career. You didn't do anything about your finances. You're more in debt. Maybe you're Maybe you don't even have, maybe you're staying with your mom or your aunt, or maybe you're having to go live with someone. Maybe your partner's gone. Maybe you never even met anyone. Maybe you, you feel alone. Just imagine, just allow yourself for a moment to go into this space a year from now, fast forward down your timeline, like you're traveling a year from now. I know it's even hard to picture, but imagine looking in a mirror. Look at yourself in the eyes. Look at your eyes. Are they lit up? Are they sad? Are they, do they, how do you look a year from now? Not making this choice. In fact, doing probably some detrimental things, making choices that aren't good for you, hanging around people that are still sucking the life out of you, hanging around people that perhaps you've made some choices now that you feel a little bit stuck in maybe you're not valuing yourself maybe people are wanting to hire you and you're like oh yeah just give me 20 bucks or uh you know you don't even have to pay me and imagine how that would look a year from now not changing anything not feeling into your worth not just feel what that would feel like imagine looking at yourself a year from now what would your body look like Would you have gained weight if you're just eating whatever you wanted, you know, still doing the things that just feel so wrong right now? You're dehydrated. You look 10 years older, even though it's just one year. Just look in the mirror at yourself. What does your hair look like? Is it lifeless? Is it blah? And how do you feel on the inside? Are your joints achy? Are you feeling like you're 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 feeling like you're just not yourself fast forward a few years of not making this choice where would you be would you have gone on vacation would you have saved any money would you have made some choices would you have invested in yourself would you have kind of tribe would be around you people taking advantage of you drawing your energy all the time giving it away maybe losing really important friendships and relationships, who would be around you? Would people be hanging around you if you were, if you were not making any of these changes in your life, if you were not making, maybe they're the exact same. Maybe it hasn't gotten worse, but just imagine what it could be like three years from now. And fast forward even further, fast forward 10 years, of not doing this work, of not changing anything, of not trying to expand your soul, of not sharing your knowledge with anybody, with not lifting anybody up, with not changing anybody's lives. Maybe you think you were because your patterns kept you in con- wanting to control situations where you were making the decisions for people. Like whether or not they should invest with you, in you. Like maybe not allowing yourself to use your gifts. Ten years from now, look in the mirror. What could life be like? Who would be there? What would you be wearing? Do you even bother dressing up in the day? Are you just going to stay in your pajamas because you don't even have a job to go to at this point or a reason to get out of bed? Perhaps you're staying in bed. Perhaps there's new diagnoses. Imagine the sicknesses, the things that could be. And now we're going to take a nice deep breath. We're going to just shake this off. I want you guys to literally imagine shaking that off with your hands. Just step out of that. This is not a timeline we're creating. It was just an exploration. And we're going to come back. We're going to zip back along our timeline, almost like we're being vacuumed or suctioned back to right now. Come back to right now, to this very moment in your understanding in how far you've come. 
look where you've come from January 2022 because this is the last um, this is the last time we had a big uh, uh, cycle that was much in the same realm of this of this planetary energy, some of the upgrades that were happening, some of the retrogrades that were happening. And look how far you've come since last year, since about 18 months ago, this lunar cycle where the nodes shifted. You've come so far, you've done so much work, you understand things on such a different level. You have such a clarity now about where you're going. And I want you to imagine this choice. What is the choice that you made coming into this meditation? Something that you just really want to create, something that you want to really start doing for yourself, with others, who you really want to be, your soul's highest timeline. And let's make this choice to really move on this for the next 90 days. Just moving the rest of this summer, really putting our energy into it. These little things, these meditating, this grounding, this, maybe it's ice baths, maybe it's drinking a lot of water, maybe it's eating so that you're in a, a certain timeline. It's these things that you know you need to do, these shifts that you know you need to make. Maybe it's creating beautiful relationships and allowing yourself to receive love, to give love. All of these patterns are going to be cleaned and cleared. All of this knowledge is going to come up in this week of what's been stopping you, what you're afraid of, and ask yourself for a moment, what is it that you're afraid of? And just allow yourself to truly make the choice. Taking that knowledge of what we're afraid of, understanding that it may be, do, may be new, but it's our highest timeline. It's what is meant for us. It's what we feel so deeply that we want to create in our life. And just imagine this life that you just really love, that you could create right now. A life living in love, sharing love, taking care of your body properly, giving it what it needs. And watching where that can bring you. Allowing yourself to receive what's already in your, in your realm. Allowing yourself to stay in love in that moment. Truly making this choice. And I want you to imagine doing these things each day. What little actions would you be taking to move towards this choice that you really want? And just taking some of these small actions. I want you to move yourself 90 days out and just look in that mirror. Look at the sparkle in your eyes. Look at the energy that you get from people telling you, gosh, that made such a difference just talking to you yesterday. Thank you for taking that time. Instead of people sucking your energy and drawing out and giving too much and creating this, the same sort of patterns that you were, what about making this shift for yourself, feeling worthy? And allow yourself to think, gosh, this was so easy. I, why didn't I do this before? Imagine all these things that you've been wanting to do. Imagine if you had done them before, when you were younger, when it would have been easier. Now you have all this information. Are we going to let time pass or are we going to make this choice now and really do this? I want you to make this choice right now to do this for six months. Imagine at Christmas. What could Christmas look like now? Imagine having that extra money in the bank account to be able to even take your kids on a trip or to go somewhere you've always wanted to go to spend a Christmas without any, any boundaries, without any constrictions or constraints. Imagine being able to 
get an extra gift for someone if you wanted to, or perhaps use that, that extra money that you've been able to, to hang on to, to receive all of that money that's always been coming in, but allowing yourself to finally receive it, to know that you're worth it, to feel deep inside that you are truly worth it. And people pay other people exorbitant amounts of money all the time. And you are coming at this from an honest, true perspective, the gifts that you have that you could share and receive from. What if you allowed yourself to do that for the next six months till Christmas? Maybe you have a nice new coat or the boots you always wanted. Maybe you were able to even get a new car. Maybe you were able to go on vacation, whatever it is. Maybe you have a new house. Where are you living? What do things look like? What would you be wearing? Imagine the people that you could be around if you expanded, if you believed in yourself, if you really believed you deserved it, that you were worthy, that you were just as worthy as them, as everyone else that you were allowed to. Imagine this at Christmas, what that could feel like. And now fast forward on your timeline, three years out, imagine what you could amass in three years what have you been doing for the last three years imagine the expansion with this true choice in three years oh i got goosebumps again imagine what you could do by really allowing yourself to enjoy life to live in love to be in love with yourself to put yourself first to create boundaries to be able to say no and to be able to say yes to the things that you want nothing holding you back who would be around you imagine allowing yourself to experience your relationship to the fullest potential that it is to make the most out of it every day to look forward to being with that person morning noon and night can't wait to get home to them can't wait to crawl into bed with them can't wait to have coffee with them in the morning Imagine if it didn't matter how you'd been hurt before, if it didn't matter the trauma that you've been through, that you really just made this choice to enjoy them with every cell of your body, to expand the feelings that you have, to expand the emotions that you have, to allow yourself to feel love on a level that you've never felt before. To enjoy touch, to enjoy the sound of their voice, Imagine putting energy into that, a choice. Imagine putting this energy into your career. What could it do? What could it be? This is what your soul has been trying to urge you and push you towards. All of these things, they keep pushing you in the same direction. What if you just allowed? What if you just chose this right now to just let yourself go for it? What have you got to lose? Who would you be? Who could you be three years from now? And fast forward that just a little bit more, five years from now, 10 years from now, what would your body look like? What would it feel like? Would you feel younger than ever? Would you have, would you be waking up, bouncing out of bed because you feel so good? How could this feel, really feel into this? What kind of clothes would you be wearing? Where do you live? Where's your house? Where's your, maybe you have many houses. And I want you to imagine right now that you're walking in the front door of your house. You're coming home and you're going up to your front door and just let your imagination run wild with this. You're going up to your front door and you're opening it. Maybe some animals are coming running towards you. Maybe there's people that are waiting there for you. And I want you to imagine all of the people that you have been able to touch in the last 10 years in one way, shape or form by expanding your soul, by following your true nature and purpose, by living this life that you love of health and vitality, this way of being, this choice, making this choice each day in such a profound and strong way, like it, like your life depended on it. 
And I want you to imagine all the people that would be there just telling you how much they appreciate you, how much they love you, what you've done for them. And see beyond them. When you help one person, you're changing their whole family. You're changing their generational trauma. You're changing their grandchildren. You're changing everything in such a profound way by just giving them hope, by listening, by being who you are, by letting your light shine, by helping the world on a collective to heal, by healing yourself. And I want you to notice on the wall, there's some pictures. There's some pictures of moments that have passed and some people that you've met. And I want you to just see whatever you see. You might see yourself with a picture of you and Tony Robbins or you and Chris Duncan or you and Oprah Winfrey or you and whoever it might be. Maybe some really important people. Maybe it's the Dalai Lama. Maybe it's Deepak Chopra. Who, who knows where this could go, where this path could take you? Maybe you're in an ashram somewhere. Maybe you're in a temple. Just notice these pictures on the wall and how you look and the smiles. And I want you to just continue to walk down this hallway and look at these pictures, just absorbing. And I want you to stop at the end of the hallway where you see this full length mirror and take one last good look at yourself. Look at your body, look at the way you're walking. Look at the way you're standing, look at the, the light of your light body. And allow the new moon's energy to just imprint this in the quantum realm. This beautiful expanded free soul that chose to expand your soul, that chose to share your gifts, that chose to share your light and to share your love. And I want you to be imagining that you can walk right through this mirror and bring yourself back to right now in your timeline. And I want you to make a choice for yourself to really make a choice because you want it, because you feel it in every cell of your soul, because it's imprinting into the quantum matrix of the universe right now. And if you guys are okay with it, I'm just gonna ask the super conscious, just come on board for a minute and tag and treat any resistance towards this true choice. Just creating this new timeline in every part of our body, in every part personality, tagging and treating any resistance toward this choice and doing a massive change history around any of this. Imagine putting any of this resistance in a bubble and using your breath to blow this bubble away from your light field, away from your light body just choosing to blow as the bubble just floats away. Tagging and treating all of the energy centers, the crown, the third eye, allowing us to understand and see this true choice is meant for us, that we are meant for it. This is the quantum realm. Tagging and treating our throat and heart chakras, allowing us to feel, speak, and love with the most purest of intentions, the words we say to ourselves to be clear, to be loving, to expand our heart's consciousness and expand the collective heart consciousness. Tagging and treating our solar plexus where this seed is just growing into this beautiful choice allowing it to expand as you say i will do this i am making this choice and go into your sacral plexus where you feel that choice you feel it down to your core 
You want this more than anything you've ever wanted and you're ready to make these shifts. You have full planetary support. You have so many huge planetary shifts going on lately. You're ready. And tagging and treating the root, any of these old familial ancestral healings and wounds that are ready to become the past, to be healed, to be felt, to be treated and do a massive change history on all of those energy centers. And just grounding all this into the matrix of the universe and into memories and timelines one, two, and three. Taking a nice receiving breath or three. Feeling this choice resonate through every cell of your body and repeat it to yourself. And when you're ready, you can come on back. My hands were still tingling, feeling some stuff shifting and moving there in the energy center. So I'm just going to continue on with energy work just for a moment as I allow you all to just come back into this timeline making this choice. And in that mirror, we drew an umbilical cord, a connection to this direct timeline. This is gonna keep us connected. We can hop back through that mirror at any time, go back into that house where all of those people, all of those memories are, all of those future memories are. And just expand into that. So I'm sure there's a whole lot more that I wanted to say, but I think I filled our brains enough with stuff. (sighs) Have some fun with making some moon water on this new moon. I love it for manifesting. Get a jug, put it out on the windowsill at night. Allow the new moon's light and energy to just charge it up. You can drink it. You can use it for washing your feet. That was something that was being channeled into me earlier was grounding in water, washing your feet. I think I mentioned last week, baths and showers, as many as you need, but the feet and water are really huge um, in this, this week, in this node shifting in this new moon, even if it's just soaking your feet or if you get a moment to just put your feet, dip your toes in the water into a great body of water, I urge you to do it because it'll just wash away any of that stagnant energy that's ready to be cleansed and cleared. The stuff is literally waiting to just kind of fall out of us this week. So just go with that, allow it. On Monday morning, I'll go through day by day for this week what to really tap into with the retrogrades and everything is uh, that is coming through, but really, going within and meditating a lot this week is is going to be very profound and important to ask yourself those questions if you need a one-on-one i'm always here and uh yeah i should let you guys go it's been so long i I went a little bit over time there i apologize my fingers are still tingling so i'm just i'm just keeping on going here with the energy work for a moment i'm going to stop facebook world here Thank you guys so much for joining, sending you all love.